Hello everyone and welcome back to To Mars and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I decided that I would like to time warp to the Jupiter window and send some stuff over there to each of the moons of Jupiter. That's going to take a lot of launches. But basically what we're going to launch are the same things that we launched to Ceres, resource scanners and ISR units in particular. And it might be easier to deal with Jupiter than Ceres because Jupiter actually helps us capture into orbit. It's got a great gravitational influence, so even though it takes extra delta V to get out there, it's going to take less delta V to capture. Uh, though getting to moons like Io and Europa, the ones closer in, might be more difficult. It's easier to get to Callisto and Ganymede. Uh, though landing on Ganymede is a whole other thing. So there are considerations, but uh, we could possibly send some stuff over there with our systems, and I would like to, but... We should check whether the resource scanners actually work in this version. And maybe, uh, I mean, the ISR units were a little bit dodgy to begin with. So we should see how they're doing. This is a save from KSB 1.8.1. So we already have a resource scanner around the moon from 1.8.1. There's no guarantee it works right in 1.12. But then it's there's no guarantee that any resource scanner will work right. So we'll just take a look at it and see how it goes. And then we'll take a look at these ISR units that are landed on the moon and see how they are doing. Possibly they'll hop up and explode. But, you know, that's par for the course anyway. So this resource scanner has the antenna on the back. It has, well, it is itself there. I forget why it's tilted like that. I suppose there's a reason why, unless there's just some error. But let's see. Toggle overlay. Has it done its uh, scan resource? Oh, that lets us pick resources. Well, there's ore. Okay, that's the only one I need because we basically convert everything from ore. Um, so it seems like ore has happened. Uh, I guess we've already done the scan. I'll go overlay. Silicates, okay, silicates. Clean water is tough. Borate, dirt. You'd think there's a lot of dirt, but that's not the kind of dirt. The dirt they're talking about is probably stuff you grow stuff in. Ore, and then the cutoff, we can increase the cutoff. 80%, 90%. So there's a nice belt there. Nice belt of ore. But as expected, it's not in the same place as we had ore before. You can see we had our resource landers around here-ish, which is nice because it uh, was a base in the sea of the moon. And, or actually maybe the ocean, Oceanus Procellarum or something. But yeah we don't have ore there anymore because that only applied to the previous version. We have some spots elsewhere though, certain craters, so we're gonna have to send new ISR units uh, to those locations. Probably an equatorial one, like one of these would be most convenient. But it's nice that some of them are in belts like this. Okay, so that's the ore locations, and it seems like this is working, so presumably, presumably, our one sent to Ceres will work, and if we send the same sort of thing over to Jupiter, it'll work too. Again, the resource scanner, even though we're not doing comms, still requires the comm unit. It's one of those quirks, even if you have comms switch off, switched off, still requires the comm unit. But okay, let me toggle the overlay, we don't need it on right now. And let's take a look at one of the ISR units. Now, they're in a location that doesn't have much ore, or any ore, we'll see. Let's try ISR unit, ISRU unit 1. Remarkably, it seems stable. Uh, note that I decided to use the stock landing struts instead of the ones that were built into the advanced ISRU unit. It's losing electric charge, though, and that is because its reactor needs the uranium now it didn't used to and it doesn't have the uranium because that wasn't built in so yeah it's going to die but at least it's stable and it's apparently drilling for ore um yeah i uh, we can quickly try and convert to liquid that was a very fast conversion of liquid hydrogen wasn't it that's not how that's supposed to work uh hold on start locks uh, it's possible that it's transferring 
from because uh, we have uh, simple logistics. I wonder if it's transferring from some other thing. I don't know why it's suddenly filled up with hydrogen and oxygen there. I don't suppose I put on a fuel cell here. I should have put on a fuel cell. <laughs> that would have been helpful. Uh, I, maybe we don't have simple logistics in this version. Okay, well, something happened though. I don't know why it suddenly popped up with all the hydrogen. Cannot switch vessels, about to crash. Maybe we should go to the track. You can see the other ISRU units there. Now, uh, let me double check. Do we have simple logistics in here? Maybe I forgot to add it. I forgot to add it. Okay, well, I'm going to need to add it. So I'm going to... Can I go back? Fine, let's go two minutes before, then I'll have some power. Let me add simple logistics in, and then maybe the power situation might not be so bad. It depends if anything happens to have uranium hanging out. Okay, I've got simple logistics in now. Let's see what happens. Let's go to ISRU Lander 2. Okay, well, what resources does it have? Got lots of hydrogen. I think it was dedicated to just pumping hydrogen. Is simple logistics here? Oh, there it is. Cannot be on a suborbital trajectory to use logistics. It's not. Ground speed is zero. Now that's a peculiar thing. This one's also on the stock landing legs. Let me just stop service harvester. Maybe that's causing it to bounce up and down or something? Well, stopping the harvester doesn't seem to have changed how much electric charge is being used. So, wait, but this... Oh, okay, uh, I just have to click to refresh there. So, no luck there. I wonder why the... I mean, the harvesters should definitely take more charge, but they weren't. That's suspicious. Anyway, it's out of electric charge now and shutting down. There's no way of replenishing. Why it only has 56 electric charge is also a peculiarity. It definitely ought to have more. Hmm. Yeah, that's strange. Well, it, it seems to always think that these things are on collision courses. Well, what can I do about that? We could drop the built-in landing legs and see if that helps, I don't know. Those lifted up a little bit higher than everything else. Does it consider it landed? Well, it sort of considers it landed now. Request resources. Toggle plug. This dialog is different than it was before. Well, anyway, it doesn't help anything. And again, let's stop and stop surface harvester but yeah it doesn't change how quickly the electric charge is diminishing we start again yeah the rate is the same that's a bit weird that's a bit weird oh so if i just suddenly started oxygen or the locks yeah it happens immediately that's obviously not supposed to happen at least it didn't fill it up to the top or anything but it's supposed to take power to do that. So there are other things that are weird in this version. It's a resource converter. It's just like a fuel cell. It takes electric charge and ore and turns electric charge and ore into oxygen. It's just a simple converter. Why it would do that immediately, it's supposed to take a certain amount of seconds per uh, unit of ore and electric charge. I have no idea. And why it didn't actually take electric charge, I have no idea. Because it's supposed to take electric charge as well. There's a certain amount of electric charge it's supposed to take. Okay, well, so I don't know if I can say that things are working, working. <laughs> uh, well, it's landed now, so we don't go back in time two minutes. But then again, maybe that's just because we've replaced the... Uh, power module on it and now our landers have the KSP interstellar power module and maybe it'll be all right with the KSP interstellar power module. Is that LH2 lander? 
I'll temporarily chalk this up to it just being a 1.8.1 save in 1.12. It appears like the landing struts have changed size. They used to be tweak scaled bigger. This indeed has a lot of liquid and hydrogen. Stop fuel cell. It has a fuel cell. Let me... hold on. Toggle plug. So it's plugged in now. Which means I think the other things can use its power. Toggle plug. Now it's, now it's full of power. So it's using the fuel cell power from the other unit. And it's producing oxygen. Where did ore came from? Anyway, start service harvester. Okay, now we're harvesting. But uh, we're getting more oxygen. Something else is converting the oxygen for us and consuming the ore. This... We've got shared resources now. We're going to stop ISRU. Okay, now we've got net production of ore and loss of oxygen because of boil-off. And once again, the oxygen boil-off is higher than the hydrogen. We see hydrogen doesn't have any boil-off right now. And we're not producing any, but the oxygen has boil off, <laughs> um, which has been consistent. I'll give it that. On the bright side, they're not hopping up, and it looks like as long as I put the built-in landing gear down, it won't read them as being suborbital. Maybe. So okay, uh, we're at the space center. It's just really, really dark around here for some reason. I guess we'll send resource scanners and ISRU units out to the Jupiter system and see what happens. At least resource scanners should work. Without further ado, here we go with the launch of a scanner probe for Callisto, or intended for Callisto, and we'll see whether we have enough Delta V to actually get into orbit around Callisto by trying to plot it ahead of time. But we're basically configured exactly like the series probe. And so there's no guarantee that we'll have enough delta V, but it did have a lot of margin, so we'll see. SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. Of course, if we need more margin, we'll probably need to use the Kasei rocket or Starship or something. Unless we want to go with a nuclear stage on this, which I don't think so. We are past the speed of sound. Okay, engines out and roll. Uh, still falling short when carrying the mini star. Okay, and separation. Switch to mini star uh, fairings. And uh, that's probably not the engine I want. <laughs> uh, those those are the engines that I want. This has enough delta V for orbit, but again, we have a lot of unused volume in the mini star right now, so I just need to shrink it down. The problem is that means that all the mounting point stuff has to be changed, right? And we do need a fairing about this size, so it all becomes very inconvenient. I guess I could make it thinner. Well, I thought we'd have enough, but it's actually pretty tight. Oh, I... apparently this is the imbalanced hydrogen-oxygen one. I just opened up the craft file. I should have checked that. Oh, that's why. Oh well. We'll just leave it on a suborbital trajectory and pretend that it gets recovered. Okay. Well, yep. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's right. Okay, that is orbit. Let's try and plot for Jupiter. Oh, there's our encounter. Good old Jupiter. Well, we'll need a mid-course adjustment, but this is okay for now. Let's try that. So, all together, it's not really showing our delta-v because the staging is all over the place. 
Oh, I forgot this. I forgot to change it from clipping into the... There's a lot of things that I forgot to fix about this series probe. Okay, well, it's not complaining about comms or anything. It's just uh, we need to be in a polar orbit for the orbital survey, so that's nominal. Okay, and go. Just going with the burn timer down there. Okay, that's the end of the hydrolock stage and separation. Oh, everything's like controlling backwards and now I don't have a node, no. Okay, well, anyway. Um, okay, that's what I was afraid of. Activate. Okay, and it's not showing the right delta V there. 3,500. Well, again, it's Jupiter. We'll just eyeball it. But can we control from the top thing now? It's all about how everything has to be mounted on the Orion carrier plane, that's all. Okay, now the rest is all a mid-course correction, so let's try that. I hope the solar panel is enough for this thing, though. Anyway, so mid-course adjustment is looking like that. Atmosphere is at 1,550 kilometers, so no problems there. Very loose capture. Okay, and then Callisto. Okay, so that'll bring our orbit down. So in total, what we're looking at is 310 for the mid-course correction, 400 for the capture. So 710, and then that's the maneuver to boost up to Callisto orbit. That's 1,300, so 2010, um, call it 2030, and then to circularize at Callisto, uh, that's 4,620, let's say. So 4,620 altogether, and we have 1,800 in this stage. And I believe we should have at least 3,000 in the next stage. Because I based that on the, the exhaust velocity of the engine. So I'm thinking we have about 5,000 in reality here. And that should be enough, barely. So it's on its way to Callisto, but let's sort of refine this. Okay, so I've changed up the probe a bit. I've decided to go with RTGs instead of solar panels, obviously. And for reduced power consumption in general, we're going with the early controllable core. I don't have my own custom probe core, which would uh, be probably a little bit more efficient because it's more modern technology. Uh, I don't have that in here, but we'll just take the early controllable core. And I've uh, reduced the size of the reaction wheel and the battery on there. And we just have one tank here. That's a little bit less efficient because uh, it's a high pressure tank. And the other two that were strapped to the side were not, but I guess it's more legit. I've changed which antenna because I think the other one won't have enough range. This one might not have enough range either, it depends. But then again, it shouldn't be really keeping track of the range. It ju should just need a comm device. I don't think it... I don't know if the resource scanner cares about the range or not. I'm not sure. So we'll see. But anyway, RTGs. And then I've changed the size of this stage, reduced it a little bit, and increased the size of the hydrogen-oxygen stage so that it can help us out with our transfer more. And I've rebalanced the fuels in the Mini Star, but still, the Mini Star needs further optimizations for use on top of the Orion carrier plane. So that'll be separate, and I've fixed staging, I hope, and we will see how this goes. Okay, so SAS is on, throttle is up, and ignition, and launch. We are past the speed of sound, and going through max Q. Okay, rolling. Okay, well, not much better, even though technically the mini star is lighter. I really have to get KOS to handle this so that it does it more consistently and maybe better than me doing it manually. Okay, that'll be enough. Okay, separation. Bearings.
All right, and let me just make sure. Yep, that's what we want. And make sure that's on. And on we go. Okay, that is orbit. And make sure everything's good there. All right. And separation. And this says 243 to come back. We'll retro burn with it. Uh, but obviously, we're not going to bring it back. We are just going to focus on the mission. Let's make sure that this is getting safely away here. Okay, well, that is the descent trajectory for that. And we can proceed with this. Okay, that's what we're going to do. This stage currently has 5,400, so we're still going to use 1,000 of the next stage. Whether that leaves us with enough to get into orbit around Ganymede is going to be an interesting call. And that's the next easiest one to try to get to after Callisto. And ignition. Okay. Trans Jupiter burn underway. Okay, and that's that stage. Okay, let's not have those keep puffing. Um, I don't know. Can I control from up here and convince it to keep that node? Please. No, I can't. <laughs> Apparently. Well, anyway, we'll just keep burning prograde until we get to Jupiter. It's probably the best policy. Okay, here's the periapsis coming in. Alright, that looks like just the mid-course correction, so I will plot that. Okay, that looks pretty good. That correction is 250 only this time. And then a loose-ish loose -ish capture there. And then boosting up to Ganymede's orbit. We have at least 5,400 to work with. Hopefully with Gany Ganymede's help, of course. So it should cost less. All right, so what do we have here? The capture is 310. That maneuver is 332, so that's 640, let's say. And that's 750. And then that's... Uh, so maybe 5,000... Let's say 5,100, and then add the mid-course correction in, and it's 5,350, so we've got... Exactly right. So, I don't think we can uh, hit Europa or Io with probes right now. Uh, not with a launch like we have. Uh, if we could have non-storable fuels, we're using MMH and Mon3, if we, if we could have cryogenic fuels on the upper stages here and have them last on the way out to Jupiter, then we'll have enough Delta V, I think. Another option would be ion engines, of course, but you know how I feel about those. But for the ISR unit, which we will launch in the next episode, we definitely need the ion engine, and we're or ion engines, a pack of 10, really. And we're going to try to send an ISR unit to Callisto. Again, we might be a little bit tougher, but Callisto might be doable. We'll see. So we'll send one out. And then we'll also send out prospective uh, resource scanners for IO and Europa. Though, you know, exploiting IO and Europa for resources is probably not the best way to go anyway, because they're tighter in and just harder to deal with. Uh, but we might as well give it a go and see what the boil off situation is. The good thing about going out to Jupiter is it's colder out there, so the propellants tend not to 
boil off as quickly when you're further away from the sun, in theory. Uh, so we can help hope for that. But anyway, so we will look to doing more Jupiter missions in the next video. And then after we get through all the Jupiter missions, I think we'll po probably pass on Vesta until we figure out what happens with the series stuff. If we have a result on the series stuff, I don't think we will yet. Uh, then we'll go for Vesta. But until we get some result from series, I don't think we'll do Vesta. We'll just go on to continue our construction of the Mars ships. And we'll have a crewed mission to Mars one way or another, preferably with a lander. I, I expect that we will be making a landing. So, yeah. That is the plan going forward, and with that I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.